dailymail.com i'm not sure uh troy is that a bullshit publication in the uk uh ish it's there's some bullshit but they also have some serious stories as well that's so. all of them that's all okay. of them. so yeah. apparently they've got yeah. this uh study here from scientists it says could a bad marriage kill you unsatisfactory relationships are as bad for you as smoking say scientists researchers studied 30 years of health and death data on 10,000 men in israel the men were in their 40s when they first started gathering the data in the 1960s. This is a lot of data then. If mm -hmm. married, the men were asked to rate their marriages on a scale of one to four. One on the scale was very satisfied with their marriage and four was unsatisfied. There was a clear link between an unhappy marriage and increased death rates. I'm not mm -hmm. surprised. Uh, the primary, sorry, this primarily applied to the case of stroke, but was so... <laughs> A bad, a bad long-term relationship can cause a stroke for you, fellas. But it was found in all premature deaths. Um, the studies linked, and the articles linked in the um, description of the video. If you guys want to read it, we're not going to read it all, but just to kind of like you know um, get the ball rolling on this. This is something I've known for a while. I don't know about you guys. But what are your thoughts on that notion? So you have the old adage of uh, married men live longer, but that's really because they become more docile and take less risks and don't really live. So not only yet that's the question, does marriage kill guys faster? Unhappy marriages kill guys faster, but like, what's the point of living longer or living at all? If you're that miserable in that marriage. Yeah. It's not um, much of a life anyways. How long were you married for John? Seven and a half years. Yeah. For me, it was like, <clears throat> two and a half or three years before i was like i gotta get out of this this is not good for me on a long-term basis like i i can't do this for the rest of my life and i just had this like fucking like voice that was like dude you gotta go um <laughs> so i've I heard mean, that voice not in my marriage but like when i was at the bpd girl I yeah. heard that voice <laughs> well i was talking to john you know beforehand before you guys kind of pulled into the green room you know waiting area and i kind of went through this exercise a few years ago where i looked through my friends list on Facebook and I've got a very small friends list and I know pretty much most of them like on an intimate basis, like they're not distant or people that I've never met. And I think it was something like one in 30 that mm -hmm. I counted that was in an actual happy long-term relationship or a marriage. The rest of them were either pretending or miserable. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it used to it's be similar when you think about the, it. Oh, sorry, Troy. I was just saying in the Navy it used to be bad. It was for the senior enlisted. They used to like swap notes on who had more divorces. The winner was my boss at five, by the way. It was a very Quebec thing to do. That's wild. <laughs> but let me ask you this you with did that. It five like, times, dude. Five, five times. times. And every single one was horrible, apparently. How Nothing plugged to do with in them. you have to be? That's <laughs> uh, he's from Quebec, Tom whatever. Lucas have like four or five marriages too. Like he's been married a few times too, right? Ooh. Yeah, but just imagine that I though. Guess. Like guys would rather slowly be belittled to death than take their own health. Like you say too, Rich, how people don't want to eat to be healthy or take testosterone if you need to take it. Yeah. They'd rather sit in a marriage and have her like slowly kill him with pie and nagging than to do <laughs> something about it. Well, well, speaking of pie and nagging, it's funny because I'm in a, 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 a TRT group on Facebook and I don't really participate. I'm more a fly in the wall, but there's a lot of women in there and it mm -hmm. always boggles me. I mean, I'm not surprised, but it always happens where women will chime in and be like, my husband's on TRT, he's got a limp dick, or he's got this story. And it's like, the wife is in there trying to run the dude's life when it's his life and it's his endocrine system and it's his hormone panel mm -hmm. that matters. And she's in there like probably nagging the guy on the side and then sharing all of his laundry with all the other guys in the group. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's certain places where women should not participate. Mm -hmm. Sounds like married man sex life forums, doesn't it, Ryan? Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah. they're going in there to Karen, to Karen for the for the husbands. Then they're saying, "Oh, my mm -hmm. my guy needs to sort himself out." Yeah, and dude, if you click on their um, profile and you look at them, and you you know, and you look at the pictures, like, well, I can tell you why he's probably not getting hard. <laughs> 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 no amount of testosterone is going to change anything. Uh, he has no problem getting hard. He just jerks off. The the lady. Lady. Try the holistic approach first before you start putting chemicals in your body. <laughs> Man. No. Anyway, Wait, so he's um, chemical. You guys have all done some consults, you know, like mm -hmm. on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I know you've dealt with guys going through the divorce machine and long-term relationships. What's your general view on this notion and this scientific study that, that you know, essentially concludes if you're in a shitty long-term relationship, mm -hmm. you're going to die younger? 
I'll uh, I'll go real quick. I I counsel guys. Uh, I have, as you know, uh, one of them is Robert Kiyosaki, um, but I I counsel guys who are anywhere between like sixty and seventy five ish. I think seventy five is probably the oldest that I've ever counseled. In fact, when I first got into peer counseling, it was usually guys between forty five and sixty five. Um, back when I was studying, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of them complain about the same thing that they do right now. And I think that a lot of guys, I think most of the sort of dissatisfaction in their marriage when they get into the later years is due to like blue pill conditioning and they cling to it and it's always worked for them or they don't know any other thing. In fact, that's one of the reasons why like my book is so, um, I guess, jarring to these guys' lives because they realize that where they're at in life and the woman that they're with and what they've been dealing with for like, in some cases, like 20 or 30 years um, is a result of their not knowing the game, right? They're not, they're being, you know, kind of plugged into all this. And so they get really, they tend to get really hostile in the beginning. And then they're like, then they get like kind of despondent and they go through like, you know, the stages of, unplug of unplugging and everything. But it's tougher for guys who are older because they've already made their bed and they have to lie in it. And I think a lot of these guys feel like they can never get out of it. So I think that that sort of, um, that feeling of being trapped and trapped because most of the guys, when I, when I encounter them, the first thing is they don't want to leave their wives. They just want their wives to bang them again. That's all they want pretty much. They love their wives. They're in love with them, but mm -hmm. they just can't live with them because they're like, they're addicted to pornography because you know, she won't bang him or, um, you know, she's, it's a constant nagging. It's a constant. Uh, and I, I talked about this with, uh, with Pat Campbell back in the day is that, you know, nagging is really sort of a low level shit test for, um, for married couples. Because when, when, when shit tests happen and you're single, it's usually like, she's trying to test you for quality. Whereas when you're married and you get shit tests, it's usually because she's like, is this guy the best I can do? Is he really, is he like, I, I need security. I need, I need this guy to actually do so. Mow the lawn, wash the dishes, do the, you know, like she, she browbeats him and henpecks him all the time to get him to do like chores and stuff like that. And it's usually like, you should have thought of that sooner. And it's like, you know, you, you're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. And so it's this constant qualification. So she nags him and the nagging is usually just sort of qualification. And his qualification is always this. How can I make her happy? How can, because if I could make her happy, then she'd start having sex with me again and we could get back to where we were before. I love her. I don't yeah. want to break up with her, but I want it to be better. And so they get into this cycle of this constant, like it's, it's a, uh, in some cases it's almost like PTSD because they're like very, you know, they're, they're, they're walking on eggshells all the time. They're like, how can I make her happy? Well, I'll, I'll buy her this. I'll take her here. Uh, I'll make her life as easy as possible. And <clears throat> the first thing that I think, what was it? A uh, book said one day uh he said uh the surest way to make a woman miserable is to give her everything she's ever asked for mm -hmm. that she wants and that's what these guys try to do and if you're doing that constantly yeah you're gonna live a shit life and you're gonna have hypertension and you're gonna probably have what is it a uh, cortisol build up right i mean <laughs> you're not gonna sleep well um and so and if you try to change anything that's when she's like, well, why do you feel like you got to go to the gym now? Is there girls there? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's this constant, you know, yes, back yes, they are. and yeah, when that's, it's like having your, uh, a, a jail warden there all the time. Sure. Yeah. That you're going to live an unhealthy life. And nine times out of 10, it's because the guy is still living in this idea that he has to qualify. He has to, it's transactional sex. If I just pay for this, if I get a bigger house, if I make it more comfortable once she gets here and then, <laughs> and then they get to menopause. <laughs> and everything goes to hell after that so I, I that that's number one number two is this is i think that um i think when we talk about like what's happy and what's not happy that's really kind of like a container word brian i think it's like whatever it is that you seem to think is is going to like these guys will probably say that they're 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 happy as can be it's just that they want certain aspects of their relationship to be better but they don't realize that they could like once they get out of that relationship, and this is the first thing that happens is when I deal with a guy who is married and then he gets divorced and then he learns just even the, the, the smallest amount of game when he starts getting laid, he's like, what the fuck was I doing? Why was I with this bitch for, for 30 years? I'm ha I'm, I can get with girls who are like 20 years younger than me now. Mm -hmm. And they're having the sex that they wanted to. They're getting in a little bit better shape. You know, they're caring about themselves a little bit more. And it's like, I think it was Sterling Cooper says, you know, your testosterone level will, will rise 
when you get married, this is a clinical fact. When you get married wow. or you get into a long-term relationship, your testosterone levels will drop. When you get out of it, when you like are divorced, men's testosterone levels go back up. That is not a good, that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> that happens because for a reason. So when these guys get out and they're like, why was I wasting 20 years of my life in this marriage when I could have been banging young hotties this whole time and caring about me and making me my mental point of origin? Then they start kicking themselves in the ass because they're like, what was I thinking? That's another level of like despondency and nihilism that you have to deal with.